Okay, let me start. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. I'm Koji Karata from Keio University, and it is my uh, great pleasure to have this opportunity, and I really appreciate the organizer for kind invitation. Uh, my talk today is entitled Education of Convolutional Neural Networks to uh, Fluid Flows Toward Machine Learning Assisted Flow Control. Okay. And as you may know, uh, we have modern turbulent research more than 100 years, and we have well accepted uh, governing equations, at least for single phase flows like uh, continuity equation and Navier Stokes equation. And also, we have excellent theory for fundamental turbulence like uh, boundary layer theory and Kolmogorov energy spectrum theory. And due to the development in measurement and simulation techniques uh, from- Kuji, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Can you please make it uh, full screen? It will be better for this. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Maybe I shared the wrong screen. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, okay, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, is it full screen? Uh, not really. Uh, let me just turn the screen. Ah, uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, just a minute. E full screen. This one. Oh, my computer is uh, shown like oh, full okay, screen. Okay. It's, it's not broken. Okay. Uh, you please continue. Sorry. Is it really full screen? Uh, so actually, I can see it full screen here. So uh, okay, yeah, maybe you can just continue. Thank you. And even with this, is it still full screen? Uh, yeah, I think for uh, well, for here it looks full screen to me. Okay, okay, I will continue. And uh, due to the development in measurement and simulation techniques from late uh, 20th century, uh, we now know detailed flow structure of turbulence like uh, near wall streaks and quality strain vortices. Uh, however, comprehensive understanding, modeling and control of turbulent flow are still challenging problems due to their nonlinear and uh, multi-scale uh, nature. And what is difficult about turbulence? As a simplest case, uh, let us consider um, incompressible flow uh, with constant properties like this. And even with this simplest case, it is difficult to handle it because, uh, because of the mouth scale nature from the uh, smallest to uh, system size scale. And for, for example, uh, if we consider very low speed flow in a water pipe, it re requires 1 million computational points in uh, in DNS. I mean, uh, on the order of 100 points in one direction. And the required computational points increases with the Reynolds number to the power of 9 fourth. And this figure shows a typical uh, diameter of quasi streamless vortices, the white guys here, uh, in wall turbulence. And for instance, for uh, flow around an aircraft, the typical vortex diameter is on the order of 0 0.1 millimeter in contrast to the system size uh, of about uh, one, uh, 10 meter to 100 meter, which means that uh, roughly speaking, uh, uh, we need 1 million computation points in one direction. And the problem because far more difficult for non uh, so sorry. So in uh, practical computation, we need to use turbulence model, but there is no universal turbulence model. This is another problem. And the problem because it's far more difficult for non-Newtonian multi-phase or reacting flows where constitutive equations are not well established.
and let me see. So it doesn't move. So we... okay. On the other hand, uh, thanks to the uh, continuous efforts uh, on numerical and experimental studies, uh, we have large scale uh, computer simulation results and high resolution measurement results, which produce uh, uh, turbulence big data like this. Also, several feature extraction methods like P POD or DMD have been developed and widely used nowadays. Actually, I wanted to skip the detailed explanation on DMD because uh, I expect that Nathan will be uh, presenting uh, this kind of thing. And, but anyway, uh, but these linear theories uh, have limitations in extracting nonlinear dynamics. So we want to develop feature extraction methods which can directly uh, capture nonlinear dynamics with a finite dimension. And as you know, uh, we are now in the third AI boom and there is an increasing attention for machine learning everywhere. And also, uh, we are now, now facing uh, substantial commoditization of generative AIs like ChatGPT and stable diffusion. And since turbulence is a high dimensional nonlinear dynamical system uh, producing a bunch of big data, uh, we can easily expect that such turbulence big data should be suited for machine learning. And also, it has become easier to start machine learning of turbulence uh, due to the development of algorithms, uh, libraries, uh, hardware, and information sites. And actually, uh, application of machine learning to turbulence has a relatively long history. Already more than uh, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, researchers in our field uh, attempted to use machine learning for turbulence, drag reduction, and flow estimation like this. And in the recent years, we can see many studies on the application of machine learning to fluid mechanics problems, like uh, estimation of aerodynamic coefficients, uh, alternative to conventional CFD technique, uh, reduced order modeling, turbulence modeling, and flow control. And application of machine learning has also been investigated in my uh, research group under these uh, JSPS project, which is uh, gov uh, Japanese governmental funds. Uh, our aim is to apply machine learning to flow field data, extract nonlinear features, and find their governing equations. And our final goal is to propose a new flow control method based on the extracted features. And this is a basic structure of the machine learning model we are mostly using. The network is based on CNN autoencoder and the flow field is low dimensionalized by the encoder part of the CNN uh, autoencoder. And uh, the part in in the middle does some operation depending on the purpose and the flow field is recovered from the low dimensional latent space to the uh, physical space using the uh, uh, CNN decoder. And in this example, uh, the middle part is drawn with a multi-layer perception, but this, can, uh, this part can be uh, replaced by something else depending on the purpose as I will introduce later. Here are some major outcomes which can be roughly classified into uh, the development of surrogate models and estimation of lacked information. And today I will briefly introduce some of these results. In the first example, we attempted a direct regression of flow fields at two consecutive time instants in a turbulent channel flow like this. Here we pick up 
uh, y z cross section cross sectional field uh, like this and we want to construct a surrogate model to reproduce uh, this dynamics from the cross sectional cross sectional fields uh, information only uh, by the way in this cross sectional fields uh, blue region uh, represent low speed region and the red region uh, represent high speed region. And the structure is changing in time and space in a complicated manner like this. And this is a network structure to learn the relationship between uh, 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 relationship of the cross sectional velocity fields between uh, discrete times n and n plus one. This network structure is basically similar to the CNN autoencoder, but this network is trained to uh, output the field at next time step n plus one from the current time step n. And the correct answer, uh, which is included in the loss, loss function, is given by the DNS data. In other words, this network is a surrogate model for the time discretized Navier-Stokes equation. And this slide shows a prediction using the trained network. Although we have, although we have to provide an initial field obtained by DNS data, after that, the network uh, recursively uh, predict uh, the evolution of the flow field like this by feeding the output to the input uh, in a consecutive times. And this is a correct answer obtained by DNS. And these two are the predictions by machine learning. Case one and case two differ from each other in terms of the latent vector sites, uh, about 3,000 and about 200. While in case one, uh, the velocity field is reproduced quite reasonably well, uh, including the low speed and high speed structures. Uh, case two, with a smaller latent space, uh, cannot capture the small scale structure. This uh, trained network can be used as a turbulent inflow generator in turbulent simulation with inflow and outflow boundary conditions. Actually, the conventional technique used for this kind of inflow outflow uh, system is to run another DNS in a periodic domain, uh, which is located in the upstream and uh, we give the tablet turbulent inflow condition uh, taken from that additional DNS. And it is called uh, driver DNS. But this machine learning model we have developed can replace this driver DNS with much lower computational cost. Uh, this is a, a value under a, a computational environment. And although I omit the details, we can confirm that uh, the turbulent statistics like these in the main simulation part is in a excellent agreement with those obtained by a conventional uh, driver DNS. And actually, to be honest, our CNN-based uh, turbulent inflow generator is not universal against the change of the Reynolds number, but an improved version, improved version based on GAN uh, proposed by a Korean group has been shown to work better for uh, different Reynolds numbers. The next example is to use a CNN autoencoder to low dimensionalize the flow field and to use so called uh, long short term memory LSTM for its temporal prediction. We have applied this network to flows around bluff bodies uh, with different shapes 
uh, as well as turbulent channel flow. While this network can uh, reasonably well predict the flow around a uh, body of untrained shapes like these, but for untrained Reynolds number, uh, prediction fails in some cases. And for turbulent channel flow, uh, it is also reasonably well predicted like this, but further improvement is needed to reproduce more uh, detailed dynamics. And this is an example of network structure used for the turbulent channel flow. And due to the limitation of the memory size of our GPUs, we had to limit the input size to be 32 cubic. And both the encoder and decoder are based on three-dimensional convolution with three different filter sites to deal with different length scales. And the uh, LSTM part is also composed of multiple LSTM units with different time lengths to deal with different time scales. And actually, this structure was chosen based on our uh, trial and errors under the limitation of our computational resource. And once we can low dimensionalize the flow field, we can also derive uh, the governing equation for the low dimensional dynamics. This is an example of a transient flow around the circular cylinder at the Reynolds number of 100. In this case, we can low dimensionalize the flow field into two variables, R1 and R2, uh, maybe too small to see, but anyway, uh, and we can derive a nonlinear ODE, uh, ordinary, ordinary differential equations for uh, low dimensional uh, autoencoder mode using uh, so-called CINDY. And this is the, uh, an example of obtained uh, ordinary differential equation. I'm sorry for the, uh, the different notation of the latent variables, but X and Y correspond to R1 and R2 in this figure. And we have also confirmed that this technique uh, can be used not only for the cylinder flow, but also a simplified uh, model of turbine flow. And once the governing equation for the low dimensional dynamics is mathematically expressed like this, it is also possible to combine it with a modern uh, control theory, for example, to stabilize the flow like this. I will explain this example in more detail at the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, by the way, what is obtained by the low dimensionalization of uh, CNN autoencoder? Here we consider a periodic uh, flow around a circular cylinder like this at range number 100, and low dimensionalize the flow field into only two latent variables. And to visualize the contribution of each latent variable, R1 and R2, we decode each variable separately like this, and we call this uh, network structure uh, as uh, CNN, uh, MDCNNAE, mode decomposing uh, CNN autoencoder. And this slide shows a comparison of velocity field uh, reconstructed using the first two uh, modes obtained by different techniques. POD, uh, proper orthogonal decomposition, is, uh, as you know, uh, a conventional linear method. MDCNN tan H is our machine learning model. The network structure of this MDCNN linear is the same as uh, that of MDCNN tan H, but we use linear function everywhere for the activation in this case. So the network of uh, MDCNN linear is totally linear. The upper figures shows 
an instantaneous field of a streamwise velocity, and the lower figures shows the time averaged error as compared to the reference DNS. And as we can see, the reconstruction result by POD and MDCNN linear are quite similar to each other. And the uh, time average error is also similar. But uh, this error is very much reduced in the case of MDCN and TANH. And the same thing can be said to the vertical component of the velocity V. And this result suggests that the CNN autoencoder is basically similar to POD, but the nonlinear activation function included in the network works to improve the reconstruction. Next, to see what is contained in the two encoder, uh, two autoencoder modes obtained by the nonlinear CNN we apply POD to the collection of reconstructed fields like this. Although I will skip all the details, uh, it has turned out that a single nonlinear uh, autoencoder mode contains multiple uh, POD modes so that a better reconstruction from the same number of bit, uh, is possible with nonlinear CNN. We have also confirmed the function of the nonlinear activation function in a different problems. Here we consider the problem set of estimating the higher order POD coefficients from the first two POD coefficients in a cylinder flow. In fact, it is in this problem, uh, it is known that the POD coefficients a3 to A6 can be expressed by nonlinear functions of A1 and A2. So we want to confirm that this kind of nonlinear relationship is uh, learned with uh, machine learning. And this figure shows the trajectories of POD coefficients 3, A3, A4, A5, and A6 estimated uh, from A1 and A2. The result show that this nonlinearity cannot be captured by linear estimation methods like uh, linear MLP or uh, linear stochastic estimation. But it can properly be captured by nonlinear multilinear perception. And a similar thing has been observed in a turbulent channel flow example. Here we try to estimate uh, the channel, turbulent channel flow from the wall uh, shear information only. And we compare our machine learning model denoted as, as uh, nonlinear CNN with some linear methods, uh, linear stochastic estimation and linear CNN where all the activation function is uh, replaced by a linear function. As far as a uh, reconstructed vertical structure is concerned, the LSE looks to give a closer result to DNS, but a quantitative examination reveals that the estimation is better by nonlinear CNN. Although non-dimensionalization, uh, sorry, uh, Low dimensionalization of CNN autoencoder works well for a simple problem like uh, flow around the cylinder at uh, Reynolds number 100. We need to improve the uh, compression ability towards its application to turbulent flows. One of the idea we tested is so-called hierarchical autoencoder. In this hierarchical CNN autoencoder, the first subnetwork is trained to reproduce the most energetic uh, feature of the flow. And after that, this uh, first latent vector is fixed 
And the second subnetwork is trained to capture the remaining feature, and so on. For the flow around the cylinder, uh, this hierarchical CNN uh, achieves a higher compression ability uh, than the conventional CNN autoencoder. While uh, three POD modes were contained in one autoencoder mode in the case of MDCNN autoencoder introduced earlier, with this hierarchical CNN autoencoder, eight POD modes are contained in one autoencoder mode. So we can expect higher compression uh, also for turbulent, turbulent flows. And this is the result when the hierarchical autoencoder, uh, CNN autoencoder is applied to the cross-sectional uh, field of a channel, uh, turbulent channel flow. The uh, value uh, below the figure uh, represent the L2 error norm, uh, normalized by the uh, original value. So uh, 0 0.40 means 42% 40, 40, uh, error. And reconstruction is slightly better than the POD. I mean, 42% and 28.6%. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, the error is still high. And uh, we still need about 3,000 modes, as shown here, uh, to reproduce a field with an error level uh, below 10%, like this. And it is not uh, below 10%, it is still 15%, sorry. And from now, I'll, I will introduce some examples on the estimation of lacked information. Uh, the first example is a super resolution of flow field. This is an instantaneous vorticity field in a two-dimensional decaying turbulence. And with our machine learning model, we can recover uh the this high uh, resolution field from this super low re resolution of four by four uh, information like this and the same technique was also applied to a spatial 3d plus temporal super resolution and we confirm that it works reasonably well as far as the time interval is uh, not so big, so that the temporal two-point correlation has a value around 25%. We can also reconstruct the entire field from a limited sensor uh, like this. In this example, we use so-called the mixture density network to output the estimated uh, mean and estimated standard deviation at the same time. By doing so, uh, we can estimate not only the entire flow field, but also the uncertainty of this estimation. And this slide shows the application of this mixture density network to some other ex uh, examples, like uh, wake reconstruction of a Nakao double 12 airfoil, with a gunny flap and sea surface temperature uh, reconstruction from few sensors. In all examples, the uncertainty is relatively high in the regions where the fluctuations are high, as you may easily imagine. And another example, uh, sorry, the another attempt to quantify the uncertainty uh, in a machine learning uh, prediction is uh, uh, this one, stochastic weighted average Gaussian. While the uh, mixture density network in the previous slide aimed at quantifying the uncertainty uh, stemming from the uncertainty in the data themselves, this uh, stochastic weighted average, weight average Gaussian aims at uh, quantifying the uncertainty due to the uncertainty in the optimized weights in the neural network. 
Here we collect the weights in the last phase in the training and resample the weights uh, under, under the uh, assumption of Gaussian distribution. Then we perform uh, multiple estimations using these resampled weights to quantify the standard deviation. And by doing this, we can somehow quantify how much the machine learning prediction uh, is reliable or not. And all the examples so far were limit, limited to the application using the numerical simulation data. But of course, we can apply similar techniques to experimental data. In this example, the network is trained uh, using uh, the DNS data, but in its use, uh, we feed the experimental particle image to obtain the velocity field. And in, co on, in comparison to the conventional cross correlation method in PIV, uh, we confirm that it works well even if uh, there is a region uh, where the particle image is missing, like this. And the investigation on the weights inside the trained network revealed that uh, the upstream CNN layer tends to focus on the geometric information of the embedded body and missing region like this. Uh, and the downstream layer tends to focus on the flow uh, characteristics. And finally, we have, uh, we have also extended uh, the similar techniques we, uh, to deal with unstructured data using Voronoi tessellation. Here we consider a limited number of sensors like this and generate an output image uh, fed to CNN using a Voronoi uh, tessellation. We also feed the sensor information uh, sorry, sensor locations as a masked image like this. So we feed these uh, sensor information expanded using Voronoi and mask image uh, indicating sensor location all together to the CNN. And the merit of this method is that we can use the CNN without changing uh, its structure, even if the number of sensors uh, number of sensor, uh, sorry, number of sensor or the uh, sensor locations are changed like this. And this is a case where we apply this Voronoi CNN to streamwise, streamwise wall normal uh, cross-section of the turbine channel flow. And again, we can reconstruct the flow field even if the sensor uh, sensor locations are moved or number of sensors are changed from those using the training process. And uh, finally, I would like to introduce our recent attempt on the flow control based on CNN Cindy. We consider a flow around the circular cylinder at Reynolds number 100, and we assume blowing and suction. Uh, actuators on the surface of the cylinder like this. And in the training process, we train the CNN autoencoder and the various flow fields by varying the actuation amplitude M. Then we derive the low dimensional dynamical equations, including uh, this up, uh, actuation amplitude M. Then by applying the optimal control theory to this latent dynamics with the help of some coordinate transform, uh, we obtain a feedback control law to stabilize uh, the trajectory of the latent variables like this. And the flow field in the physical space is recovered by using CNN decoder. And we can confirm that the wake is successfully stabilized by this feedback control. And actually, the biggest problem we are facing right now is that while it works well in the latent space, it does not work so well 
uh, when we use this, this uh, same framework uh, to uh, in the full DNS. Uh, but anyway, we are still working on this problem. Okay, now I'd like to summarize my talk. Actually, all the example I introduced today are basically just fitting, which is like uh, in the case of autoencoder, uh, like this simple uh, loss function. A simple uh, optimization optimization problem, but this can become a powerful tool. For example, for a further understanding of physics, uh, cost or data amount reaction for flow predictions, applications of advanced control and optimization optimization theory through low dimensionization, and for further utilization of turbulent research, further low dimensionization and clearer ex, uh, interpre uh, interpretation should be necessary. And uh, I'd like to thank my former and current students who did uh, studies uh, I introduced today. And thank you very much. And I'm happy to uh, answer your question. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Pukata, for the wonderful talk. So, uh, so for the online participants, uh, if you have any questions, can you please uh, raise your hand and we will uh, come to you. If uh, any of the offline participants have any questions, please uh, do so as well. Uh, so maybe I can uh, start with uh, a, a simple question. So you said, uh, so in your uh, study of the flow around a cylinder, you derived the dynamical system, right? So there were the two ODEs. Um, I, I forget the slide number. Uh, it was in one of the earlier slides. Yeah, this one. Um, yes, yes. So yeah. here, uh, so here, uh, this these equations are valid for Reynolds number equal to one hundred. Is it? Yep. Okay. So what what's the like? So if you have to do it for a different Reynolds number, um, do you have to start over again? Is it? Or? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the nice question. It is a very important point. And actually, in this case, we have studied uh, Reynolds number one hundred only. So this equation is applicable only for the Reynolds number 100. And if we do not include the Reynolds number itself in the, the candidate of terms in the nonlinear equation, then we have to uh, derive separate equations for each Reynolds number. But of course, you can include the Reynolds number itself in the candidate of uh, uh, the term. And then. It is. It may be possible to derive uh, nonlinear uh, uh, equation, uh, which is valid for different Reynolds number. O although I I'm not sure if this, if it is success successfully derived or not, because we haven't tried yet. Uh, okay. So, like uh, in particular, if you want to look at uh, the changes in the flow as a function of the Reynolds number. You would have to derive. Uh, I mean, presumably the numbers that you have in these equations here are dependent on the Reynolds number. And yeah. So, okay. Actually, the EMA, uh, the idea is quite similar to what we did for flow control. In the case of flow control, yeah, we included uh, this M in the candidate for the term. Uh, which represent the blowing and suction amplitude, uh, which uh, varies in time. In a similar manner, you can include Reynolds number itself, but, but uh, in the case of Reynolds number, we have to consider also nonlinear terms related to Reynolds number too, I guess. So it will be more complicated. Okay. And just another uh, follow-up question. So is there any... Um sort of um, just physical justification for how uh, these equations come about? Uh... Ah, this is a very difficult question. Yeah, uh, for example, if you, yeah, 
uh, if you want to interpret the me physical meaning, uh, all we can do is to compare with the existing theory <laughs> right now. Uh, yeah, for example, if, you, if the equation contains only first order term and uh, mm -hmm. third order term, then we can relate the derived equation with the stuart landau equation, for example. But uh, what, what, what about fifth order term? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, other questions from the audience? Uh, there is someone who raised hand. Uh, yes, uh, Khalid, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Please? Yeah. So, my question is basically your work is uh, most related, as I understand, uh, regarding the turbulence and all these things. What about the uh, application of uh, this neural network and all these things in uh, predicting the stability by linear stability? Sense? Can we also use this equation or something like? Just by predicting the um, just predicting the stability of the system. Thank you very much for the nice question. This is also important point. Actually, we have attempted uh, similar. Uh, uh, we have attempted to apply similar uh, CNN network to uh, transition from laminar to turbulent flow, but we haven't succeeded yet. The main problem is that. Uh, maybe this is uh, still within my guess, but low dimensional latent vector uh, may uh, locate in a different uh, surface in, in terms of the uh, manifold. So maybe difficult. This is a bit difficult problem. Uh, of course, linear stability can be uh, handled with uh, this kind of network, but nonlinear ones are quite difficult. I think this is my just this is just my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question? Uh, maybe it's not very related with your that talk. But uh, I've been just wondering that uh, the methodology that you have presented here, uh, is it somehow dependent on uh, how the turbulence is generated? Like uh, uh, there are a lot of ways to generate a turbulent, like from the shear of the wall or uh, some uh, free surface uh, deformation. So is it somehow uh, related uh, to how the turbulence is generated or will it be changed if we change uh, how it is generated? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, in terms of the very beginning of turbulence, the answer to your question is the same as a previous question. It is about stability problem. So it may be difficult to handle it because, uh, uh, yeah, uh, as I said, as I answered to the last question. But for this case, for example, fully developed turbulence, uh, and regeneration of turbulence, uh, I think the low dimensional mechanism is embed embedded in the trained network. So it is somehow representing that kind of nonlinear mechanism, although it is very difficult to interpret it. Because uh, I work in thin films, and so in thin films, uh, we can see there is a transition between. Uh, laminar to turbulence in a very low Reynolds number. For example, it's uh, mm. the range is around uh, 150 to 300 uh, within this range. Uh, the initiation of the turbulence will happen since the film is very thin. So uh, mm. if you just uh, raise the Reynolds number up to the 300 limit, uh, mm. so a lot of uh, experimental studies also have uh, 
if we give the evidence about this one. So that's why I was uh, uh, curious that uh, it change uh, the mode of the ignition of the turbulence. Uh, will this kind of uh, model or will this kind of uh, methods will work uh, in that uh, physical phenomena? Yeah, to yeah, to my opinion, it may be difficult. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because normally, when you are dealing with uh, these uh, chemical devices like heat exchangers and this condensers uh, mm. kind of things, your mm. uh, range of Reynolds number is always within that limit of uh, three, 100 to 300. Mm. And uh, in that limit also, you have a moderately, not fully developed turbulence, but mm. uh, you have a, uh, some sort of transition between the laminar and the turbulent state to enhance the heat uh, heat transfer basically the reason is uh, to generate the reason to generate this kind of uh, not fully turbulence one is to enhance the heat transfer so that's why i was uh, curious that if this model can be actually apply can apply it in uh, our cases also okay we'll yeah. discuss it later yeah, yeah. thank you Okay, uh, are there any further questions? Okay, so if not, let us uh, thank our speaker. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you uh, for the talk again, Professor.